1994, two engineering philosophies that had spent decades on opposite sides of the world came together to reshape the diesel industry. What happened next wasn't just a partnership. It was the death of an American icon and the birth of something entirely new. And the truth behind it is more controversial than you'd expect. Detroit Diesel had ruled American highways and battlefields for over half a century with engines that were loud, proud, and unapologetically simple. Meanwhile, MTU Friedrichshafen had been quietly perfecting precision-engineered power plants that whispered where Detroit engines screamed. When these two worlds finally met, the result would divide mechanics, operators, and diesel enthusiasts for years. Detroit Diesel was founded in 1938 as a division of General Motors, initiating a bold commitment to two-stroke diesel technology that would define American industrial power for over half a century. While competitors built conventional four-stroke engines, Detroit's engineers created power plants that fired twice as often, producing that distinctive rapid-fire bark that became the soundtrack of American highways, construction sites, and waterways. The company rose to fame during World War II with engines like the Series 71 and 92, which powered everything from Pacific Theater landing craft to cross-country freight haulers. These engines were loved for their loud, powerful, and brutally simple mechanics. Any mechanic with basic tools could keep them running. The two-stroke design philosophy was simple. More power strokes per revolution meant more power per pound, and fewer moving parts meant greater reliability in harsh conditions. By the 1980s, Detroit Diesel had built an empire on this foundation. The 8V92 dominated long-haul trucking, with power ratings commonly around 350 horsepower and a sound that announced a driver's arrival from three miles away. The massive 16V149 produced up to 1,200 horsepower and moved mountains, literally powering the heavy haul rigs that transported oversized loads across America. These engines didn't just move freight, they defined what American diesel power meant to an entire generation of operators and mechanics. But Detroit's greatest strength was becoming its fatal weakness. Two-stroke engines burned fuel constantly and leaked unburned diesel through their exhaust ports, creating the blue smoke that followed every Detroit down the highway. The scavenging process that cleared exhaust gases also allowed unburned fuel to escape, making these engines thirsty and dirty compared to four-stroke designs. By the 1980s, Detroit faced mounting pressure from emissions regulations, noise ordinances, and fuel efficiency demands. The two-stroke era was fading as environmental concerns grew and operating costs became critical factors for fleet operators. When the EPA began enforcing Tier 1 emission standards in the mid-90s, Detroit faced an existential crisis as its two-stroke engines struggled to comply. The EPA's Tier 1 standards limited nitrogen oxide emissions to levels that two-stroke engines simply couldn't meet without expensive after-treatment systems that would double their cost and complexity. The company needed a technological shift to survive, but abandoning two-stroke technology meant abandoning everything that had made Detroit Diesel an American icon. MTU Friedrichshafen represented everything Detroit Diesel was not, a company born from Maybach's military engineering legacy that specialized in precision over power, efficiency over noise. Founded from the ashes of Germany's post-World War II industrial reconstruction, MTU became known for four-stroke, high-speed diesels that whispered where American engines screamed. The company's breakthrough came with engines like the Series 956, which produced up to 2,680 horsepower while running at less than 108 decibels. Quiet enough to meet strict European noise regulations and stealthy enough for military applications. MTU's secret was obsessive attention to detail, electronically controlled fuel injection that adjusted timing thousands of times per minute, advanced turbocharging systems, and combustion chambers designed using computational fluid dynamics. MTU had established itself as the premium choice for marine, rail, and industrial applications across Europe by the 80s. Their engines powered luxury yachts in the Mediterranean, high-speed ferries in the North Sea, 
and backup generators in hospitals where reliability was literally a matter of life and death. MTU specialized in common rail fuel injection, quiet operation, and highly engineered systems that delivered superior fuel economy and lower emissions. But the American market remained largely close to them, dominated by Detroit's established dealer network and mechanics, loyal to two-stroke simplicity. MTU had the advanced technology to meet future emission standards through precise fuel injection and combustion management, but they lacked the manufacturing scale and market access to compete with Detroit's dominance in American industrial applications. MTU was perfectly positioned to solve the problems Detroit Diesel faced. They had the clean, efficient, quiet technology that could meet EPA regulations. What they needed was a way into the massive American market that Detroit controlled. The crisis that forced these two worlds together began with EPA regulations, but the solution emerged from an unexpected alliance. Industry executives who understood advanced diesel technology recognized that MTU's four-stroke technology could solve Detroit's emissions crisis, while Detroit's manufacturing capacity could give MTU the American market access they desperately needed. The first meeting between Detroit and MTU engineers in the early 90s revealed an immediate cultural clash. Detroit's team arrived expecting to discuss adapting MTU technology to Detroit's manufacturing processes. MTU's engineers had prepared detailed presentations on why Detroit's entire approach to diesel engineering was fundamentally flawed. The breakthrough came when both teams realized they were solving different problems. Detroit needed clean, efficient engines. MTU needed market access that could justify the massive investment required to develop next-generation diesel technology. Neither company could achieve its goals alone, but together they could create something entirely new. The development program that emerged from these negotiations was unlike anything either company had attempted before. The Series 2000 and Series 4000 engines would combine MTU's four-stroke architecture with Detroit's expertise in the American market. But this wasn't simply a matter of building MTU engines in Detroit factories. It was a complete reimagining of what a high-performance diesel engine could be. The first Series 2000 engines fired up in the mid-1990s at Friedrichshafen, marking a major shift in diesel technology. The 8V2000, displacing 17.9 liters and producing 965 brake horsepower, sounded nothing like a Detroit engine. Gone was the distinctive two-stroke bark, replaced by the refined rumble of a four-stroke that could barely be heard over the cooling fans. But the real revolution was hidden beneath the valve covers. The Series 2000 featured common rail fuel injection technology, a hallmark of the Series 2000 engines, preceding its widespread adoption in passenger vehicles by several years. The electronically controlled common rail system delivered multiple injections per cycle with precisely metered timing and quantity, producing cleaner combustion and better efficiency than mechanical systems. This level of precision was impossible with Detroit's traditional mechanical injection systems. The Series 2000 could adjust injection timing to within 0.1 degrees of crankshaft rotation and vary injection pressure based on load, speed, and ambient conditions. The result was significant improvements in fuel economy and emissions compared to Detroit's two-stroke designs and emissions levels that easily met EPA Tier 1 standards with room to spare for future regulations. The Series 4000, introduced soon after, pushed boundaries further. Available in 12, 16, and 20 V configurations, these engines produced up to 4,300 horsepower while maintaining the same efficiency and emissions performance as their smaller siblings. The U.S. Coast Guard's Sentinel-class cutters were built with twin MTU 20 V4000 M93L engines, each rated at about 4,300 kilowatts, about 5,766 horsepower which gave the 154-foot vessels a top speed of about 28 knots and enough electrical capacity for modern sensors and communications. Alaskan fishing fleets adopted MTU's high-speed four-stroke engines from the Series 2000 and 4000 family in new builds like the 136-foot factory longliner fishing vessel Arctic Prowler, 
outfitted with twin 1000 horsepower MTU mains for bearing sea longlining. Compared with legacy Detroit two strokes, the newer high speed four strokes ran noticeably quieter, making engine room communication easier, a luxury unknown on traditional fishing vessels. The offshore oil industry became a major customer for the largest Series 4000 configurations. On drill ships and production platforms, operators installed banks of 16-cylinder and 20-cylinder 4000 series generator sets, typically rated from about 1500 to 3250 kilowatts electrical per unit, and ran them in parallel to supply dynamic positioning, mud pumps, and hotel loads while meeting class and emissions requirements. Luxury yacht builders discovered that the Series 2000's Whisper Quiet operation opened entirely new possibilities for interior design. Super yacht makers like Benetti, Heeson, and Sunseeker used the Series 2000 and 4000 in many of their custom yachts. The engines were so quiet that guests could sleep in staterooms directly above the engine room without hearing them run. Emergency power applications showcased the engine's reliability and clean operation, and major hospitals in dense urban areas use MTU Series 4000 generator sets, including 16 V4000 models, to meet strict emissions rules and uptime requirements for critical backup power. In remote mining operations, MTU Series 4000 diesel generator sets provide on-site power for pits, processing lines, pumps, and worker camps. Sites typically use containerized 60 Hz units rated from about 1125 to 3250 kilowatts and run them in parallel as multi-megawatt plants. Electronic controls handle large load swings and changing altitude and temperature, while emission certified packages keep operations compliant. Railroad applications demonstrated the engine's versatility and power density. Some passenger rail applications explored Series 4000 engines for power, benefiting from their compact design and power density. The engines' compact design allowed more space for passenger amenities while providing the acceleration needed for higher speed operation on upgraded northeast corridor tracks. What emerged from this collaboration was something new, neither truly Detroit nor MTU. Detroit's rough-and-ready ethos had collided with MTU's engineered precision, creating engines that delivered lower emissions, better fuel economy, and longer maintenance intervals than anything either company had produced independently. But they also represented a fundamental shift away from the democratic simplicity that had made Detroit engines beloved by mechanics across America. The market response revealed a fundamental split in the diesel world that would define the industry for decades. Marine operators who had struggled with noise regulations embraced the Series 2000's 95 decibel operation, quiet enough for normal conversation in the engine room at full power. Commercial operators saw fuel costs drop by thousands of dollars monthly, and maintenance intervals stretched from 500 to 1,000 hours between major services. But longtime Detroit customers felt betrayed by the complexity and silence of the new engines. Purists disliked not just the technology, but what it represented. The end of an era when diesel engines were mechanical devices that any skilled technician could understand and repair. The Series 2000 required specialized diagnostic equipment costing $15,000 per service bay. More than many small shops had invested in all their tools combined. Mechanics who had tuned two-stroke engines by ear, listening for the subtle changes in exhaust note that indicated timing problems or worn injectors, found themselves staring at computer screens filled with error codes they couldn't interpret. Parts costs skyrocketed in ways that shocked the industry. A common rail injector cost $800 compared to $150 for a mechanical unit injector from a Series 92. The electronic control module that managed fuel injection cost $3,200 to replace, more than an entire mechanical injection pump. Some considered it a betrayal of Detroit's heritage. Truck stops that had serviced Detroit engines for decades found themselves unable to work on the new four-stroke designs. Quality control issues plagued early production as MTU's engineers, accustomed to building engines in small batches for specialized applications, struggled with Detroit's high-volume manufacturing requirements. Common rail systems failed after just hundreds of hours of operation, 
leaving operators stranded with $50,000 paperweights. The electronic control modules proved sensitive to vibration and moisture, failing at rates that would have been unacceptable for mechanical systems. Meanwhile, MTU gained more control over the partnership as production problems mounted. The German company established its own service network and began marketing the engines directly to customers, bypassing Detroit's dealer network entirely. Communication problems compounded the technical issues as MTU's documentation, translated from German technical manuals, often lost crucial details that American technicians needed. The final blow came in 2000, when Daimler Chrysler acquired Detroit Diesel as part of its global expansion strategy. The German automotive giant had its own diesel technology developed for Mercedes-Benz trucks and saw little value in maintaining the MTU partnership. Daimler's engineers viewed the Series 2000 and 4000 as expensive complications that diverted resources from their core automotive diesel programs. MTU Friedrichshafen became part of Rolls-Royce Power Systems in 2014, consolidating the Series 2000 and Series 4000 families under Rolls-Royce ownership, while Detroit Diesel continued under Daimler in the on-highway sector. The Series 2000 and 4000 engines are still in use globally, now badged as MTU products with no mention of their Detroit heritage. They power some of the world's most advanced vessels and installations, from U.S. Navy patrol boats to backup generators in London's financial district. But the revolution's true legacy isn't the engines themselves, it's what they destroyed. The partnership marked the end of Detroit Diesel as an independent American engine manufacturer and the beginning of an era where diesel technology would be dominated by global corporations rather than regional specialists. The mechanics who had grown up with two-stroke engines found themselves obsolete almost overnight. The distinctive sound of a Detroit two-stroke, once as common as a train whistle, became a rarity heard only at truck shows and vintage equipment demonstrations. The last Series 92 rolled off Detroit's production line in 1995. In its place came a new breed, MTU's high-speed four-strokes. 